Hey guys, so today we are hypothetically rebuilding my makeup collection if all my makeup disappeared. So if I woke up tomorrow and all of my makeup was gone, these are the 10 products I would buy first. And this is a mix of tried and true products that I already know and love, and then some are new products that I haven't tried before. I mean, you know, I thought about only picking products that I've tried, but then when I'm thinking realistically, like if this actually happened, being the makeup nerd that I am, I would take this as an opportunity to try some new products too. So it's about a 50-50 mix of products that I have already tried and love and products that would be new to me. So I've done this video in the past as well. I think it's been over a year since I did it previously. So I definitely have a whole different list of products to share today. I think this was a tag video way back in the day, but I recently saw Andrea Mitigliano do her updated version and it reminded me that I've been meaning to film this video again too. So I will link her video down below. I love her channel, highly recommend <laughs> checking her out. I feel like I mentioned her a lot, but she's great. Really excited to get into the products, but first I do wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Ana Luisa. If you've been watching me for a while, you've probably heard me talk about them before. I have been working with them ongoing for the last like two years and there is a reason why I continue to work with them and that is because they are just a brand that I feel like I really align with. They are a fully carbon neutral jewelry company. They use recycled metals in their jewelry and I also, I just love their pieces. I wear pretty much at least one of their pieces every single day. They have earrings, necklaces, rings, bracelets. And today I am partnering up with them to let you guys know that they are having a Mother's Day sale going on right now. I know it might seem early, to be thinking about Mother's Day, but it is coming up next month in May. So it really is right around the corner. Their Mother's Day sale is a buy one, get one 40% off sale. And let me tell you, when I first discovered Anna Luisa, I gifted my mom a pair of their earrings for Mother's Day, actually I think it was. And she has been wearing their jewelry ever since. Since then I've gifted her another pair of earrings and a few other things. She loves their jewelry. She's also very environmentally minded, so she really likes that their pieces are sustainably made and sourced. I I think her favorite earrings that I've gifted her are the Riviera hoops. They're just a really cute, dainty, like sort of sunburst looking design and they have a little moonstone in the middle, so pretty. But I also wanted to show you guys a few of the new pieces that I am wearing today. You've probably seen me wearing these a lot in recent videos. These three pieces that I have on right now are so perfect for spring. I feel like I've been wearing them constantly ever since I got them, but these are the Papillon earrings. They're a little kind of mini huggy hoop with a little butterfly charm on them. And then I also have the necklace that matches with those earrings. This is the Soryaz necklace, the same little butterfly charm. And then I've been layering this necklace quite a bit with that butterfly necklace. This is the Robbie chain. This is like a flat gold chain necklace. Necklace. I just really think this sort of flat chain is so good for layering because it kind of it lays flat on your skin So it doesn't compete or get in the way of like other necklaces So I I feel like these three make like such a perfect little set So those are just some ideas. Those are what I've been loving recently, but I have so many favorites You really can't go wrong with any of their pieces. They're so well made so If you're in the market for a Mother's Day gift or just a little something to pick up for yourself I highly recommend checking out their buy one get one 40% off sale The link will be right at the top of my description box Be sure to click that to access the sale So yeah, thank you so much to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support my channel and let's go ahead and hop into the 10 products I would buy first if I had to completely start over my makeup collection. If I woke up tomorrow and all my makeup was gone, I would be really sad. But I think it would be kind of fun, as upsetting as it would be to lose all your makeup, I wouldn't mind starting over. I think I, I have a good idea of what I would want to buy. These are just the 10 products I would buy first. Obviously, I would continue to add more to my collection slowly, but I feel like this would be a good kind of basis to start with. So the first product I would buy would be a foundation. I decided to go with one that is newer to me, but if I lost all my makeup, I know that this is one I would want to have in my collection. This is just the one that I feel like works the best for all kinds of different occasions. No matter what my skin is going through, it just looks really good on my skin. And this is the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. And this is definitely an expensive foundation, but I have just fallen so in love with it since I got it about a month or two ago. I did film a full day wear test on this when I first got it, if you wanna check that out for like more info on how it wears and everything, but I just love the way that this looks on my skin. This is the closest dupe I have found to the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. It's obviously way more expensive, but I actually think this wears better on my skin throughout the day. Now, this is not going to be a long wearing foundation in a sense that it's 
it's going to fade throughout the day. It's not meant to be long wearing. They don't even claim that it is. But as it fades, it fades very gracefully. A lot of foundations, they might, like the coverage might stick around, but by the end of the day, a lot of them will start to kind of look broken up or just, just kind of gross the way they slide around. But this stays looking nice on my skin all day, even as it does slightly fade. So that's what I really like about this foundation. And on top of that, it just looks so beautiful and skin-like on my skin. It's not really dewy or matte, it's just right in the middle. It just looks like skin. And I also really like that it has SPF in it. So a lot of great things about this foundation. I would definitely try to get it on some sort of a discount. Ever since I've gotten it, this has been the one that I've wanted to reach for like every single day. It is just so good. I also thought about my ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation, and I would probably buy this as well, but I feel like of the two, I'd want to have the Kosas one first just because it's even a little bit more dry skin friendly than the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. And some days, my skin, you know, will get like random dry patches if like literally anything gets thrown off, like if the weather changes suddenly or if, you know, I accidentally use a product that irritates my skin. So it's nice to have something that I know is going to be more hydrating. And even though the ColourPop Pretty Fresh works pretty well on dry skin, I feel like the Kosas one is even better. So this one is the one that I would feel like I would want to have first, even over the ColourPop one. So then for my concealer, I would pick up the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is my favorite go-to concealer out of all my concealers, both high-end and drugstore. This is the one that I consistently want to reach for every single day. It looks great for filming. It looks great in real life. It has really high coverage, but it also doesn't look cakey and dry. So it's just perfect. <laughs> um, and I wear the shade Light Ivory. Oh, and by the way, in the Kosas foundation, I wear the shade Very Light Neutral 110. So then for powder, this is another one that you've heard me talk about time and time again. In fact, I just talked about this in Wednesday's video as well, both of these. But this, the powder I would pick up is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder in the shade Fair amazing powder. It's thin, it's finely milled, it's blurring, smoothing, never looks dry and heavy, works well on the under eyes and all over the face. Like the e.l.f. concealer, this is the one that like if I am just letting myself pick whatever powder I'm using, I'm not trying to pan a certain thing or reach for something in my makeup basket or something, this is just the one I automatically reach for because it just always works well. I don't have to think about it. it you can't mess it up. It's just, it's just beautiful. So that would be the first powder I would buy. Another product I would have to buy is an eyeshadow primer. I cannot get away with not wearing an eyeshadow primer or my eyeshadows will crease and fade. Um, and I think the one that I would go for would just be the Milani eyeshadow primer. I haven't had that one in my collection for a long time, but it is a really good, reliable one. It's only nine bucks at full price. I think it's just as good as the Urban Decay Primer Potion um, or any other eyeshadow primer. I mean, I'm not picky, but that is probably the one I would go for. I would also want to get a brow product and I think I decided I would get a brow pen and the brow pen I would buy is not one that I've ever tried before but I've really been loving the Urban Decay brow blade. That one comes with a pencil and a marker, like it's a dual-ended product, but I don't really feel like I need the pencil side so I would probably just go with like a plain brow marker. And I think I would want to try the NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen. Um, I've heard really good things about that one and it is like half the price of the Urban Decay one. It's $12. Um, and I think I would probably get the shade Blonde. One of you guys told me that the Blonde shade is actually cooler toned than the Taupe shade, which is usually the other way around, but I do prefer a cooler toned brow shade, so I think that is probably the one I would buy. And that would be the only brow product I would buy to start with. Hopefully it would work well. <laughs> yeah, I've just been really loving the brow markers lately. I did use my Urban Decay brow blade today. I really like how it allows you to get these very natural looking hair-like strokes. And I'm able to put less product in my brows overall while still getting the shape that I really like. So that's the one I would go for. As far as cheek products, I would also want to get two products that I've never tried before, which is kind of risky, but they're two products that have been on my wish list for a long time, and I think I would probably use this opportunity to try some new things. So the blush that I would want to get would be the NYX Sweet Cheeks Liquid Blush in the shade Pale Taupe. I've heard so many good things about it. In fact, when I did an Ulta Shop With Me video a couple of months ago, I thought about buying that one and then I didn't and then so many people were like, no, you should have gotten the NYX, <laughs> you should have gotten the NYX Sweet Cheeks blush. So ever since then, I've kind of regretted not buying it. I ended up instead getting the Milani Sweet Cheeks blush, which I'm also loving. I would also eventually buy this too, but I think the first one I would want to try would be the NYX Sweet Cheeks Kiss, just because I've heard so many good things about it. It looks so beautiful, and that pale taupe shade looks like just the perfect, like, 
rosy brown shade and I don't have a bronzer on this list. I wouldn't buy a bronzer because I'm limited to only 10 products and bronzer is not really a product I wear every day. In fact, I'm not even wearing any today. And I feel like the pale taupe shade could kind of work as like a blush and maybe sort of a contour-ish bronzer shade. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to layer it on too much, but you can put a little bit on your forehead and I feel like it would still work. And then the highlighter I would I would get is one that I do already have one of this formula, but I haven't tried this particular shade. I would want to pick up the Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter in the shade Ozone. That looks like my perfect kind of everyday champagne, like very neutral, goes with everything kind of highlighter shade. I already have the shade Privilege and love it. Um, but this is a little bit less of an everyday shade for me. This is kind of like a peachy golden highlighter, which I really love, but I would want to get something that I feel like I could wear with anything. And ozone looks like the perfect shade. And I've also heard so many people that are around my skin tone, that's usually their favorite shade. So I feel like I would probably end up liking it, even though I haven't tried it yet. Um, I already know I love the formula. It's so smooth. It's subtle, but you can build it up to look a little bit more intense if you want to. Um, but lately, these days, I've been preferring more of just like a subtle, lit from within kind of highlighter, and that's what these are perfect for. So that's what I would go for there. And then, like I said, I would skip bronzer. I also wouldn't buy a setting spray or a primer. Those are two kind of optional steps for me. I do enjoy using setting sprays, but if I'm just narrowing it down to 10 products, that's the one That's one that I don't feel like I would need right off the bat. So for an eyeshadow palette, I decided the one that I would pick up would be the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. Now, they did discontinue the original version, which I do have, um, but the new version, I know I complained about this a lot when it first happened, when they first discontinued this and launched the new version, and I still am annoyed, don't get me wrong, I still love this original version, but the new version, I can't lie, it does look really, really pretty. It also is, I think, $10 cheaper than this one, which is good because it is fewer shades as well. But the new version does have a very similar vibe to this one, and these are just the kinds of tones that I have been really into lately. I mean, I love colorful eyeshadows, but generally on a day-to-day -day basis, I just, I feel the most put together and confident in neutral shadows. So I think the first palette I would pick up would be a neutral palette like this one. It has like a rose gold, some more like taupey silvery shades, and I absolutely love Aether's matte formula. They are just so blendable and easy to work with. So yeah, that would be the first palette I would go for. All right, so then for lip products, I just have one lip product that I would pick up in these first 10 products I would buy, and it is the Milani Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper in the shade Soft Rose. Now I'm holding up an empty one right now because I actually just completely finished this one, but I, I know if I were rebuilding my makeup collection, this is one product that I would absolutely want to have in my collection. It is my perfect My Lips But Better nude shade. This color, matches my natural lip color but it's a pretty opaque gloss so it just ends up looking so polished and put together on my lips there's something magical about a lip color that perfectly matches your own lip color it almost seems like you might say well why not just not wear anything on your lips if if it's between that and a color that matches your lips but it just looks so natural yet so perfected and put together at the same time it's it's really like a true my lips but better lip color and, you know, a lot of times I like to pair this with like a brownish lip liner, but it also just looks so pretty on its own. It would go great, I'm sure, with that Aether Rose Quartz palette. And again, lately, I mean, I do love a bold lip from time to time, but lately I've just been in a neutral and nude lip color kind of phase. So this would be the first one I would buy just because I know it's something that I would use all the time. I mean, I use this one all the way up. I do plan on repurchasing this at some point because it's that special of a lip color. And also, does anyone know of a lipstick that is exactly this color? Like I'm talking exactly this color because I really want to get a nude like bullet lipstick that is this precise color. I checked Temptalia, but they didn't have any dupes for this for this color on there. So if anyone happens to know of a lipstick that matches this, let me know, because I'm on the hunt. <laughs> All right, so the final product I would of course have to buy would be a mascara. And this is another category where I want to try something new. I'm always, I'm always interested in trying new mascara formulas. I have some favorites that I already know I love, but I think I would want to use this as a chance to try something new. And the one that I've been really wanting to try is the new, I don't know how new it is, but I think it's relatively new, the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. This has a really interesting looking brush. It's kind of like an hourglass shaped brush, 
similar to like the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, but it has like spiky rubber bristles rather than like the natural style bristles. I do prefer a rubber bristle brush myself, so I have a good feeling about that mascara. It's definitely on my list to try. Like next time I'm in need of a new mascara, that's probably the one I wanna get. A lot of people seem to really like it and I don't think I've ever tried a mascara from Milani, so I'm just curious. So that's the one I would pick up in that category. But those are the 10 products that I would buy first if all of my makeup disappeared and I had to completely start over. Let me know what would be the 10 products that you would buy first if you had to start over your makeup collection completely. And do you think you would stick to products that you already know and love or do you think you'd wanna try new products. I'd love to hear in the comments below, um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the Ana Luisa Mother's Day sale. I'll have that linked in my description box. And otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!